Awesome. Cool. All right. It's four o'clock already. Thank you for being here. I'm grateful to be here. I almost didn't make it because of... But I'm going to talk about my experience in participating in this uh, event in Los Angeles for some time now. Uh, first of all, who am I, I and how I ended up here? Well, I'm a software engineer. Uh, I work for a company called Softec. Hola, amigos. I know you're, you're watching. Um, uh, doing uh, DevOps things. Uh, I am a promoter, an enthusiast of free and open source technologies. I've been contributing to Fedora since 2008. Uh, at the beginning, most of my interactions were with, uh, of course, the Mexican community, uh, also with the Latin community, and uh, North America, probably due to my geographic location. You might recognize some of these guys uh, from back in the day, from LATAM and, and North America. Uh, this was taken at, at my first Fedora conference in Tempe, Arizona, back in 2011, when I attended the, the FoodCon. And uh, that uh, bearded guy next to me uh, used to be an ambassador for Fedora. His name is La Larry Cafiero. Uh, he talked me into attending uh, the conference known as a SCALE. So later that year, I was able to, to attend my, my first conference. But wh what is the SCALE? Uh, it is chart for Southern California Linux Expo. It is an, a, an event that grew out out of a series of uh, Linux user group fest to become the largest community-run uh, open source and free software conference in North America. There are other events that are much bigger, but the, they are running by uh, uh, institutions, vendors, and com are more commercial. Uh, it is held annually in the greater Los Angeles area, uh, and Fedora has been participating since its fourth edition back in 2006, or at least that's as far as I could go back in time. Uh, you can see photos for, from that event. Uh, Larry, I, I don't know if you know Karsten Wade, uh, Tom Calloway is um, in the booth behind that little head. John Stanley joined us for several editions. And uh, it consists of talks, exposition floor, keynotes, uh, lightning talks, workshops, collocated events like uh, KubeCon LA, DevOps LA, Fedora Activity Day, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, also social uh, activities. In the links uh, below, you can find more information. So how did Larry talk me into uh, attending a scale, uh, he told me that it'll be good, not only for Fedora, but for the conference, because given the uh, large uh, population of uh, Spanish-speaking people in the area, uh, uh, it'll be good to have people that uh, speak Spanish, because we receive a lot of visitors, uh, 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 guided visitors, and also, uh, media outlets, television stations uh, from the area that speak uh, Spanish and they need someone to to promote the conference and, and Fedora in, in Spanish. So uh, I gathered some data to, to see how Larry was, uh, if he was right about that theory. And here, here is some of them. Uh, <clears throat> this is just geography, it's not politics. Uh, <laughs> actually, that is my badge from one of the editions, and it, it reads, please contain your impulse to discuss poli politics with me, because in the previous edition, uh, out of nothing, I, people approached me and started discussing with me as 
as if I was interested. I, do I look like someone willing to discuss politics I, at a Linux event? Well, I was not. But the Hispanic population in, in California is almost 40%, 40%, according to the latest census. And it increased 11% from the previous census. Uh, and that 11% uh, is m more than uh, the general California population grew in that period. So it is quite a lot of people there. Uh, I found this uh, graph in which uh, depicts the, the percentage of Hispanic or Latino population in the US. And for example, the first one in the top is the population of McAllen, Texas. And, and it means that 92% of the population in McAllen is Hispanic or Latino, so practically everybody. El Paso, Texas, which is my neighbor from my hometown, is 82.9%, a lot. And uh, at, at the level of the arrow, you can see the uh, Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Anaheim. Just those counties, we're not taking into account uh, Orange and uh, Burbank, uh, many of them. That is 45.1% 45, 45 uh, it is estimated that in that industry counties, the population is 12.8 million. So 45% uh, 40, of that is 5.8 million. So a lot, a lot of uh, Latin population. So actually there are only five cities that have uh, a population larger than 5.8 million and those are the capitals of Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Argentina. Uh, they have more Hispanic population even that uh, Madrid, right? And uh, that means that by uh, proportion, uh, if I promote Fedora in Los Angeles, uh, by proportion I, I, I reach more people than I can do in any of the Mexican cities. And my hometown is in the Arrow, Chihuahua. It has nothing to do with the dog, but I put it in there anywhere because I knew you would be wondering. Uh, the second one in the list is Tijuana, which by the way, we get a lot of visitors from Tijuana, which is great due to the, to, uh, the um, uh, distance, it's, it's pretty short. But if, uh, we can reach Tijuana and, of course, other big cities like uh, Monterrey and Isaac. Guadalajara, Guadalajara. <laughs> That's my man, <laughs> Guadalajara. All right? <laughs> okay, those numbers are cold, but the effects are, are, are warm. Uh, because whenever you uh, encounter someone from another, my, a member of your minority, there are some positive effects. Uh, for example, an increased sense of belonging and validation, uh, stronger social support and solidarity. Uh, you can serve as a mentor or as a role model. If this guy could do that, why can I, can't I do, do the same, no? And probably not, not applicable, but uh, collective action and advocacy in defending uh, common interest rights or, or interest, right? So this uh, t-shirt that I'm wearing right now and the one that is in the, in the slide, I tried to use it uh, on Saturday uh, in the day of the conference because Saturday is the busiest day uh, for scale. And I have noticed for some years now that uh, people read Mexico, Fedora Mexico, and they automatically approach, oh, you're from Mexico, yeah. I'm from Ecuador, awesome. Uh, do, do you wanna know what, what is Fedora? Uh, 
or uh, I'm, I'm from, my parents are from Guatemala. Awesome, cool. Uh, are you uh, already using it? Uh, it is uh, like, a, oh, I, I wasn't expecting to, to see someone from, from, uh, from a speaking Spanish minority, right? So th that, that is an, a positive effect that I have noticed when I just let the, the, the people know that I somehow speak Spanish, right? Uh, but yeah, Larry was right. Uh, there are a lot of attendees. In, in the photo in the left, we have a guided uh, visit organized by the conference, and most of the students were from a Latino background. And in the right, uh, we have been interviewed by um, uh, a local tech uh, media uh, right in the, in the in the booth, right? Carl, I mentioned San Antonio and you missed it. Dude. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you might be wondering, has the language been an, an issue? And I'll say no. Not the language itself, because you can express or communicate an idea with the level of domain of the language that you already have. You, you may want, you, you, may achieve to transmit your ideas, right? But there is this other thing called the paralanguage, which is, which involves uh, the tone of your voice, your expression, um, and, and it's very tied to your culture. We Latinos like to, to hug and, and high five, and we yell and we laugh, and we kiss hello, and we kiss goodbye, and that that's us. But that's that's not imply that other cultures are willing and yeah to do that. So it has not been an issue yet, but you have to be careful with with that. In the picture, it is a picture taken in the conference. Uh, the guy in the top right that is Bint Surf, considered uh, the father of the network that uh, supports uh, the internet as we know it right now. And uh, he was demonstrating some communication issues at the beginning, uh, might not have uh, much to do, but uh, it is taken from, from the conference. So uh, what has worked well for us? Uh, I think that many things. Uh, back in the day, uh, when we uh, gave away uh, CDs and DVDs with the Fedora image, they were very well received by, by the people. Actually, uh, many people stepped by our booth just to grab a copy of the latest Fedora edition. And to tell us that they like them, they use them, they collect them, they, uh, and <clears throat> they wanted to have a <coughs> a DVD of Fedora. I know that the DVD days are gone now, but uh, I, back in the day, that worked, worked uh, well for us. Uh, also, uh, we have diversified what we have uh, on the booth for displaying. Uh, Sometimes we had a one laptop per child laptop that attracted, attracted many people. Uh, Tom Callaway took a 3D printer for a few editions and they were very, very popular. Uh, whenever we demo the, the Fedora music spin, uh, people stand by your booth by, um, to play the guitar or the piano or whatever. It's been very popular. And the last edition we had a laptop with Fedora Silver Blue and we had a, a container with the Windows pinball uh, game. And a lot of people was uh, nostalgic. Oh, is that, uh, is that Windows? No, it's, it's pinball running in a container in an immutable desktop. That worked well. Uh, <clears throat> we're a community. We are not a big vendor, so we cannot raffle 
uh, uh, big stuff like other vendors, like uh, some other uh, have uh, Nintendo Switches and stuff like that. We are not. But uh, the mocks that, that you see at the, at the reg register, registration desk um, uh, are very popular. People, people appreciate them, and they gather for, for the raffle. We, all, we have uh, also give away some power banks, and they, are, uh, they have a lot of acceptance. The Fedora Activity Days, uh, that is uh, something that we did for some editions. Uh, uh, we have a room like this with pre-configure activities for newbies and sysadmins and uh, for system administration or to create a collaborative application between the attendees. And that is something that worked well for us. Uh, and uh, I think that people appreciate that whenever they approach, approach or boot, uh, we're always willing to listen and try to, to resolve their doubts. Whenever we are unable, we try to point them to the right channel or people who, who is uh, able to assist. So I think this is these are some examples of what has worked well. And also collaborating with other teams <coughs> like Red Hat, CentOS, GNOME, and other communities. <coughs> Sorry. Or so the people said. Uh, I, I think it, it has worked well that we have been recognized with the, this award. Uh, by the vote of the people. Uh, the first one, it's for most memorable experience for visitors and attendees. Most interest display at the scale. And the trophy reads best cheater, which I like to think is something good. <laughs> I hope that there is another connotation than the one that I know because <laughs> Cheater in my limited language means something bad, but well, we, we got that as well. So what are we planning for, for future editions? Uh, we have some ideas. <clears throat> uh, we, we're going to try our best to bring the Fedora activity days, activity days back to the scales. This implies uh, uh, an extra, extra logi logistics because uh, we need a room, we need activities, we need power outlets, uh, all that it takes, and and they come at a cost as well. So, but we need to to figure out a way to to bring them back. Also, we would like to increase the Fedora presence in the scale. By leveraging the local groups, Linux groups, and academic groups in the area, because uh, we need not to renew but to refresh the presence. Uh, this is a banner. When I was working on the presentation, uh, the the news came up, and. Uh, uh, Matt, Matt uh, suggested, and so President Biden confirmed, we need fresh voices and younger voices. Uh, well, oops. Not, not to replace us, but to refresh us and complete uh, us. This is something that we are looking to do with the local activity the local communities. Um, uh, encourage Fedora contributors to apply for call for papers so we can have better chances to, to have Fedora related talks in every edition. We have uh, we have had presence for a lot of editions but we, we need to to apply for, for more. Also uh, we might uh, uh, start supporting other Similar community-run events like the Texas 
Linux Fest, that is something that we may want to start considering. And all of the ideas that, that you can share are uh, very, very welcome. Uh, I think that's all that I have. Uh, this is, that's a grab I highlighted from the, from the board that we use at the booth. And uh, this is a picture that I share because in the last edition, when, when we were at scale, uh, the call for papers for this conference started. So it is announced in the dashboard. And uh, we have our, our batch request. Don't bothering picture that because it is it has expired. But uh, yes, this is what I wanted to share with you. Uh, anyone has any question? I'm wondering how uh, can you, are you connecting with these local, the local Linux users groups uh, in, in terms of Fedora? And then secondly, not as a question, but um, uh, we do have the ability to create some workshops uh, using AWS resources and uh, have you thought about working in, in terms of those? Uh, so love to collaborate yeah. with you there. Okay. Yeah, for, for the first part of the question, yeah, the three guys uh, from the right, uh, they, they are local to, to, to the area. And two of them work in academics. Uh, so they, they are very active in the area. So um, this is the way that, that uh, we are thinking to, to expand. I, I couldn't do that from my hometown. It's not possible, but they, they are very active and, and they are... Uh, working on that. And for the other part of the question, yes, uh, all of the help, all of the resources uh, uh, can help. Uh, we just need to, to be very clear and to define what we're going to uh, offer in those activity days and, and what we are trying to achieve. <clears throat> yeah, sure. As someone who's native to Mexico, I spend a lot of time in Oaxaca, okay. and um, I've been very interested in how I could bring Fedora more into that community. Um, it has been difficult for me to find maybe the right people um, in, in situations. Do you have any advice in terms of, of bringing, bringing that to um, populations that are not English speaking? Okay, uh, yeah. Sometimes we, we even, even us, we have a hard time trying to identify those, those persons. Uh, for Oaxaca, uh, I, I personally know a couple of contributors. Uh, if you want to reach me by the email that I shared, I might get you in touch with, with those guys. Um, uh, and again, if they're not... Uh, the right ones are active at this moment. They, for sure, will know where to be redirected. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, give it up. Give it up for Isaac and his. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>